On this episode of DC On Screen, The Flash be floppin', y'all. <laughs> Are Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 next? Are they even a part of Gunn's new DCU? Also, Sasha Kaye's turn as Supergirl may not be over just yet. We're talking all that, plus that shocking Superman and Lois renewal and what it cost the series, and so much more right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome into DC On Screen, the podcast that's been bringing you news and reviews of the DC Comics properties on film and television since 2015. I am your host, David C. Robertson, and here's the guy you tuned in for, my co-host, Jason Goss. Hi! I'm trying to be enthusiastic, because that sounded great. <laughs> so We're all just staring at this dead, smelly fish. Look, man, we're trying to remain optimistic, have a little fun. Around. I didn't look. I, you know, I didn't. I didn't love the movie. I, you know, loved a lot of things about it, but uh, I, I, I ain't wanted to go out like this. Mm-mm, no, we all see the numbers, though. It is what it is. Yeah, uh, domestic sixty. Uh, sorry, seventy six million eight hundred seventy nine thousand, and uh, so worldwide that brings it to one hundred seventy six million seven hundred seventy nine thousand. So, uh, with a budget of 200 to 220 million and a marketing budget somewhere between 38 and 60 million, based on the reports I've seen, yeah, man, it is a flop at the moment. There is not much hope for it to be anything else at the, bo- at the box office. Uh, it, there would have to be like a miracle. Like every uh, copy of Across the Spider Verse would have to like bur- be burned simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that new Pixar thing would have to like n- retroactively not exist. Yep, yep. Drown the Kraken. <laughs> Trap made, Indiana Jones in a cave. <laughs> it made fifty five million this opening weekend for perspective. Black Adam did sixty seven million. Shazam: Fury of the Gods did thirty million, uh, and. Estimates oh, that's are the now, trend. Anything with a with a lightning bolt symbol. Uh huh. I thought about that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some estimates are expecting the Flash will finish you know, the we're, weekend. We're joking, at a 70... but like, there's probably a little algorithm somewhere that thinks that's the thing. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, they're they're t- they're saying the weekend's going to finish at a 72 percent drop, and that's really not good. <sighs> yeah. No, no legs on the Flash. I know what that sounds like when I say it. But you know what? I know I, I, you know, in good conscience said I can't necessarily recommend it to for theaters. I do think it's worth a watch. Uh, so if you want to help the movie out, you know, and a lot of people I, I've seen, I know a lot of people who loved it. You loved it. Oh, um, deeply, yeah. No, I mean, I enjoyed the fuck out of that. I cried, but there were people in the theater clapping with me. Um, like, yeah. It was a good experience watching this movie. Deeply uh, we, enjoyed it. We had uh, one of our listeners, Andre Sparks, write in and said, I would give the movie 8 out of 10 max. Definitely would have rated it higher if they would have had more recent actor cameos. Word is Reverse Flash and or Grodd will be the villains of the sequel. If it happens, I would love that. The emotional mom stuff was great when he was saying bye to his mom. I definitely felt that. The point of this movie was just to introduce the movie concept of the multiverse. So when Legacy starts, even when... We see the same actors. It will technically be a new universe. I think that was the point of the movie. If you're a CW fan, you already know about multiverse, but for people who aren't, this helps them understand what's coming. Literally, I can see them just saying Earth 23 and go from there. Um, Pretty much. I mean, and like, I do think part of that is the, the same thing I was complaining to you about the other day when me and you were talking about the review is like, I think there were so many expectations that it couldn't have hit. But mm-hmm. I think we're also maybe kind of working on a larger look at that, like, the fracturing of expectations, <clears throat> but still I, it, that was like the, the movie served its purpose as far as like it kept the people that were still supposed to be in Canon and Canon mm-hmm. and, and, and jettison the rest right out the fucking back of the ship, man. Yeah. Actually, I, I did love this Andre, uh, answer one of my questions about it. Uh, since I said that it kind of nullified the, um, CW crisis on infinite earths. And he says, uh, for the CW crossover scene, remember after Crisis on Infinite Earth, the only ones who remember Crisis are the seven pillars, unless you get the special ring from Cisco. So technically, <laughs> it's all still canon. So <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, it is it is definitely still canon as far as the CW is concerned. Are concerned, I think. But um, yeah, I I do think like 
even that was was an ambitious idea to sidestep to be able to keep some of the stuff around for a minute. Mm-hmm. But the numbers aren't playing out, so I I I don't know how much they're going to actually really care. Like if I were going at this point, I would just shoot my shot and forget everything else. Yeah, I, I mean, I really would. I then I hate to say that because I loved like we we've been talking about for eight years how much we love some of this shit. Yep. Even when it was a bad idea, we loved it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Um, so, I don't know. I've been trying to figure out what happened and why exactly it was. It has been so dismissed. And, you know, Spider-Verse coming out. That is, the first one was a universally loved movie. It's yeah, gonna, huge it's draw gonna on that. It. It's and, gonna kill it. You know, I just watched it a few minutes ago, literally, and it, it's it's gorgeous. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's everything you thought it might be. Um, I listened to Coconut Records on the way home. That's going to be relevant for those of you who know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Just um, one actor. Yeah, it's I, you know I think there was so much there. It's always death death by a thousand cuts. Like when a movie is really successful, it's always sort of amazing because you know. They they tried so hard. They they had all these like people coming out. Tom Cruise, James Gunn said it was one of the best superhero movies ever. David Zaslav said it. You know they had all these you know people coming out from CinemaCon saying, "Oh, it's amazing! It's amazing! It's amazing!" And I think it like really hyped it up in a way. But then you gotta you know you how how many freaking early screenings did they have? They had a ton of early screenings. They did, and that was. And they were early, early, not like just a couple days before and you got to sign a form. Uh, like they were early and there were a lot of positive views. And I genuinely still just think that's because it's a good movie. It's just that the general audience was not into it, didn't care. There was no, I don't know, man, uh, like the, the grassroots were not there. But yeah, I, I think it would have done better if it came out like three weeks earlier. Because with all the early screenings, there was like, like a lot of positive word of mouth. And then there was like a big gap. There was like two or three weeks where no one was talking about it. And then everybody was talking about it <clears throat> across the Spider-Verse. I, don't know, I mean, maybe, but I feel like in a normal cycle, that would have been okay. I just mm-hmm. think this this is abnormal for reasons that like, I don't know, we're going to have to look into it. There's a lot going on. There are a there, thousand cuts. There, Yeah, there are. Just with this movie alone, there's a lot. Because, you know, you, you also had like the DC reboot announcement, you know, and I know a lot of people don't think the general audience hears about this shit, but I, my, most of my family is made up of general audience and they knew about it. They were like, so what are they they're rebooting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, so, that's kind of the point is like most of, most of GA just sees like, oh, so we're just quitting on that. All right. I won't, I won't worry about that thing. Yeah. Like that people, is, I think. The major player in the low box office. Between that and Ezra Miller. And then there's, yeah, the all the weirdness with Ezra Miller. And, like, it, damn it, like, I, I don't think there's anything to it. I, I think they were, you know, fine. <laughs> but, like, I, it, it, but it, it played in. And there was, there was a, again, more fracturing. Every, every little step of this is more fracturing. Mm hmm. Because there were leaks, people were like, taking rips of of certain scenes and editing them to make them look worse like showing like Ezra putting the baby in the microwave for god's sake you know i i've run into people who thought that was a thing uh you know as far as like having like as the mother screams on he you know puts the no no that's not what happened in the movie did i mean <laughs> i didn't see those cuz i avoided them uh yeah. aggressively but like did they show the microwave plugged in you dumb fucks mm-hmm. No, no. Of course but not. Okay. They, you dumb they, fucks. They also, and I don't want to really talk about it as far as the cameos go, what was actually there, but all the cameos were leaked. I know. And proliferating online, ma- you know, on a massive scale. Um, I know. I mean, it, like, it took out a lot of the, like, I I think it was part of the Black Adam problem, too, was like the the mystery was gone. Mm-hmm. It it wasn't something you just had to be there to see. I mean, I I genuinely think the streaming numbers are going to be okay. Like a lot of mm-hmm. people watch it. Hell, I'll rewatch it uh, happily a few times probably. But it's not. It's just not going to hit. Like I think it's going to make its numbers as far as getting them back to, you know, like out of the parentheses here. But it, yeah. it's not. It's not going to like really make money. And 
so many things contribute to it. Mm-hmm. Including like, you know, God, there's just been this, like, there has been a narrative spun that DC movies just aren't good. So, and you, to have a movie that's following Black Adam and Shazam Fury of the Gods, which did not do well at the box office. Like, I, I just, I feel like the audience doesn't give a shit about DC right now. They're not willing to, there's like, look, Spider-Verse is coming up. I got to take my kids to this Disney thing. I got to, I'm not going to go see that for right now. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to give this one a shot. And uh, so I think, I think all of this stuff, you know, plays into it. Uh, and, you know, I know that you didn't really f- see a problem with the VFX, but. It's not you know, that the, I didn't see a problem. It's just that they weren't problematic, if that makes a difference to. For, if, for you. Yeah. Like, it, I know that's weird phrasing, but. It, yeah, you know, it, but you know, for I'm me, sure yeah, I, I understand. Uh, for me, though, you know, I'm seeing this as like not just oh shit, DC's messing up again. Like because I know that DC uses the same VFX houses that Marvel does. Yeah, that's not the like, problem. It's not that, that they no, don't have the right phone number for God's sake. <clears throat> right, like they they submit like we need you know 200 shots or whatever it is, 2,000, yeah. 3,000, whatever. And, uh, you know, bids are placed. And the problem is with Marvel and DC, and it keeps coming out more and more and more. Hell, we just saw, like, an article just dropped today about how over 100 uh, animators left uh, across the Spider-Verse because of the working conditions. Like, it is... It, is, it sucks right now on that side. Like, it's there's a some sweatshop. Dude like, we'll do it for four cents a page. And there's some guy in the right. background going, I haven't eaten in seven days. Shut up, you! Yeah, it's, it's a sw- I'll beat you with my shoes. Three and a half cents a page if he it's, shuts uh, up. Yeah, it's it's a sweatshop right now. And, you know, I saw someone point out uh, over in the Stranded Panda chat that Guardians Volume 3 looked really good. And I was like, yeah, because James Gunn meticulously plans everything. And Marvel did not mess with him on anything. He got carte blanche. So he planned everything out. He, they had plenty of time to finish this movie, to do the VFX, make them look really super good, and uh, and that's what you need. Like all, like the Flash, the Flash had three different regimes working it while it was being made, and those different regimes all had different plans for the future. I mean, so when generally, they came, I'm going to say this sentence, and so many people are going to disagree with me. We're lucky it even got here. Like, kind of, yeah. Like it's. <laughs> And I know there are people saying, like, fuck you. It should have never gotten here. I hated it. But, like, in terms of production, it, it almost shouldn't have existed. Yeah. But, you know, DC isn't the only it's one kind of with meta in a way. You know, VFX problems, like, you know, Thor, Love and Thunder. Like, people said that the, the effects on that were shit. Actually, and then they were too bad. A couple of spots, they were real bad. But, <laughs> you know, I heard things about Quantum Mania. That. And also, I mean, th- these Quantum movies Mania, aren't making. There are parts of Quantum Mania that look way worse than Flash, in my opinion. Yeah, and Quantum Mania, by the way, made four hundred seventy-six uh, million worldwide. It didn't even break even. No, this isn't a DC problem. And that was, this that is, was the opening of Stage Five. That was supposed to be yeah. a huge thing. This is yeah. This is a superhero genre problem, and it's something James Gunn actually spoke to, and we'll talk about that later. But he spoke to it in uh, in Inside of You podcast, which I can't uh, recommend enough. You guys have got, if you haven't, go check out his episode of Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. It's good in uh, general, too. Because it is. But yeah, Gunn's episode was just, he he laid it out, dude. He thinks there's too many superhero movies. And he thinks that it's destroying the industry in a lot of ways with like <laughs> the VFX houses and just cranking out stuff without making sure it's the best thing to put out. Um, yep. I, I, I agree with him. I don't disagree. Yeah. So anywho, um, <laughs> on the new episode of, uh, fat man beyond where they talked about the flash, mm-hmm. <laughs> Kevin Smith said he was hoping that it did better than it's doing now because Michael Uslan's kid, Michael Uslan is the guy that owns the rights to Batman. He said, uh, mm. his kid said if the movie did as well as the Batman, one of the next Batman movies they were going to make was Batman Beyond with Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah, yes and no. Yeah. That's also just like a thing that was said for for people involved, but like Uh-huh. Look, if that was done extremely well, of course I'd be into it. 
because you know it. How could you not? But oh, sure, sure. But I'm not particularly interested. Like not out out of the gate interested in it. I'm not either. Not I, where um, it sits here, though, and and that's the problem. Is like not where it sits here is mm-hmm. why I'm not interested. If in a different place in a different time, it would absolutely make a ton of sense, and I'd be d- super excited. Yeah, and I'm in a weird place where like I'm looking at all these numbers and looking at the fan uh, reactions to things, and I'm going, no, we we need to be very careful right now. Yeah, very very careful. Uh, speaking of the Inside of You podcast, uh, James Gunn said the first DCU character for sure is Blue Beetle, and the first DCU DCU movie is Superman. I've seen a lot of confusion about that, and I, I don't know exactly what he means. But the di- Blue Beetle director said we are part of the universe, we are part of the world, we are part of the plans that they have been creating for the future installments of the DCU. We are not tied to all the films from the past. Yes, our movie lives in the world where superheroes exist, but that doesn't mean that a certain event or certain alliance or certain things from the past dictate where our film is going. Our first movie, the way we wanted to do it, was always with the mentality that we wanted to do two more, at least, and taking the traditional three-act structure of a story, we wanted our first movie to practically be the first act of a saga. So, mm. Soto seems to be saying that this is DCU proper. It was just, It's just that it was made under the previous regime. So, it sounds like James Gunn is adopting pulling it that in. Effectively. Yeah. Absolutely. I think and, I'm going to uh, stick with that verb, adopting it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, by the way, FilmRatings.com reports Blue Beetle is rated PG-13 for sequences of action and violence, language, and some suggestive references. Probably. Do you see that sword? <laughs> it does look dope, dude. It does look dope. <laughs> I mean, like, it looks dope, and it looks like he's going to cut a bunch of motherfuckers in half. Yeah, like, I am, like, not hugely excited for the movie. I mean, I'll go in with an open mind, open heart, and all that shit, uh, but... You know, right. But that sword does look dope as shit, like for real. I'm genuinely excited. I mean, I, I think it'll be fun. And I I love Jaime and Blue Beetle as a character. Mm hmm. Me too. Uh, over to Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. James Wan. You wonder says, if that's going to be like a funny title in about five years. Because <laughs> it's the last DCEU movie? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> like. It's the last Frankenstein. Oh, hopefully. we're going to put a pin on that one. God, yeah. God, my, my kingdom. If it's the last Frankenstein movie <laughs> by Frankenstein, I mean the last movie to be made under several different regimes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, James Wan says, I hope to finish it up soonish. We have the DGA thing, contract negotiations coming up next month. So there's just some stuff that we have to finish. It is a big movie. It has a lot of visual effects and moving parts, but we're moving in that direction and I cannot wait for people to see it. I think people are going to be excited to see that this movie is quite different from the first movie in terms of tone It's a little bit more serious and we're dealing with issues like climate change. We're not afraid to lean into that in a big way because the Aquaman comic book, even way back then or way back when has always been environmentally conscious. He's always been someone who's fought to keep the ocean clean and it feels more relevant in the world that we're living in today. So this movie has something to talk about, but it's still a fun action fantasy movie. I've, and he does confirm that Aquaman is part of the DCU. He says, I've had to make adjustments all along the way. The DCU has been through lots of different versions. And one of the things that was challenging upon this film or about this film was keeping track of what's going on. Fortunately, the Aquaman universe is pretty far from, removed from the rest of the world. We're going to many different underwater kingdoms that are not necessarily related to what's happening with the other movies and characters, so we're standalone in that respect. So I can just tell my story on its own without being affected too much. But at the same time, I have to be mindful of what's been happening. And uh, I, we don't know. There are outlets reporting that it looks like they're doing more reshoots for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom because Jason Momoa is like posting Instagram stories that are showing behind the scenes images from the film. It might be from the previous go around. Maybe they're amping up to start advertising this movie or, or, or maybe he's doing more reshoots. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Honestly, either way I could see it. 
Um, Larry Carter at Larry the Deuce on Twitter asked, will Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 have the same results as The Flash? I'm guessing box office wise. Can Gunn give us the quality of films we DC fans deserve? Well, I, I, I don't see Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 doing as well as they hope. Like at this point, I feel like Blue Beetle will make less than The Flash. I mean, honestly, yeah. And I see Aquaman 2 maybe doing better than The Flash, but not nearly as well as Aquaman 1 did, which it, you know, uh, you know, did over a billion. I just don't see that see that happening right now. There, yeah, it's the, not going to make the, a billion. Like no, there's just no the, fucking chance. Yeah, the but you know, th- things have been so strange with DC because, you I know, mean, Fast Aquaman and didn't even kill that much and it had Bemo in it. So like but, you know, it's weird, though. Like, who would have guessed Aquaman 1 would have done a billion? Especially after Justice League. It was immediately after Justice League, which didn't even make its money back. I mean, yes. But also, I think the Aquaman thing was, like, refreshing in a way for a lot of fans. Like, you went to see that and thought, oh, my God, this is also gorgeous. Like, I need to come back and watch it again because it's it's beautiful. It really, it really is. And it was a palate cleanser from... Justice League, mm-hmm. which as we covered it, like seemed fine at the time. Then as it soured, yeah, <laughs> precipitously, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, Justice story League. That, as far as that goes, the original, like the yeah, the Justice League, as it were, uh, it was fine. I enjoyed what there was of it. I understood that there were issues making it, not the least of which was Zack Snyder's daughter committing suicide and so you know i tried to give it a pass for as much as i could and just be like look this is what we got you know uh but it definitely has problems and knowing all the drama and backstory behind that movie has really soured me on that version of it for real as that got revealed it was shittier and shittier Mm -hmm. there's also like i don't know at the time that that was what we had i mean hell we were even excited because it was like danny elfman and and joss whedon because we thought hey you know they can Make a superhero film? Great. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's not how that worked out. Yeah. Uh, to the other part of the question, can Gunn give us the quality of films we DC fans deserve? I mean, this is wholly subjective. I think Gunn is an amazing filmmaker, and I love Peacemaker. I love The Suicide Squad. It's hard, you know, a lot of people are, you know, pointing out The Suicide Squad didn't make as much money as it should have, but this was in the middle of the pandemic, this was also when this was same day release on HBO Max. Warner Brothers seems to be very conclusive that the Suicide Squad made more than enough money for HBO Max. Uh, I, they wouldn't have greenlit Peacemaker for Christ's sake. So yeah, if it, if it didn't, uh, and I love Peacemaker. Oh yeah, Peacemaker is a work of art, and I love all three Guardians movies. Yeah, me too. And they've also kind of. They've put in, you know, Peacemaker 2 as far as like uh, Gunn said, as soon as I'm done with Legacy, that's the first thing I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of faith in his part of the franchise. And, you know, at this point, why not? Fucking go th- full throttle. Let a creative have the reins for a little while because we know goddamn well for the last 30 fucking years, it feels like the execs have fucked us. Yeah. Just so, you know. To put it very simply. And it's funny because he's the one that's vocal. He's the one that's out there. It's not just him. It's him and Peter Safran. Safran is handling the money and he's handling the creative. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Zach's cha- Zach Champion at Weight and Horror on Twitter asks, uh, with all the talk about D- WB and David Zaslav selling off music IPs and discontinuing Turner Classic Movies, do you think this puts the DC Comics and DCU brand in jeopardy? Uh, no on the DC comics for me. I, I don't think Warner brothers is going to sell off DC comics. This they're one buoy It's the thing that keeps them afloat. <laughs> I mean, yes and no, like the actual comics. I don't think they've had any effect on the comics themselves. Yeah. Like just, nobody buys comics. Nobody no, buys just, comics. like watching over the years with a stack that's three foot tall of shit. I haven't read yet that like I'm relatively current, but like, no, I don't think the actual movies, TV, anything, anything we cover on what we call DC on screen has had a fucking single effect on the actual comics. They are what they are. 
So like yeah. they don't have to affect it. They don't need anything from it. They just, it, as long as it's making money, they'll just let it sit there. They might, yeah. they really might sell the on-screen stuff. And that well, would surprise me a bit. I, I don't think they will. Like, I think they, they are still looking at DC as their Marvel. Like they think this is their path to Marvel numbers, or at least what Marvel numbers were seven or five or six years, years ago, something like that, you know? So pre pandemic. Yeah. I think that's what they're thinking. And Marvel and DC comics, they don't, they don't sell a lot in terms of books monthly, but at the same time, like they make the important money. part. They're yeah. They solid. make their money, but at the, but they're also like the most important part about them is there are the IPs because you can make TV and, and movies out of these things. Well, you can, but that's the funny part about it is like you might sell the IPs as, as far as the screen and film representation. But you, you can keep the idea of whatever the hell the comic writers have generated mm-hmm. and just use it at will. Like that, yeah. that's not copyrighted in the slightest. Now, I don't, I'm unsure about the DCU brand as far as DC Studios, because with the part that I'm worried about is with Zaslav selling off music IPs uh, and discontinuing Turner Classic Movies, that feels a whole hell of a lot like, you know, just streamlining as much as you can so that you can turn around and sell it later. Oh yeah. No dude, he's selling the farm. So yeah, to me that feels a little like, uh, James Gunn is going to like start to cook a little bit. And despite what anybody thinks like his contract, he's got 3.5 years. So left on this contract. This point, yeah. So he could plan 10 years all he wants, but I think the shareholders and I think WB itself does not understand God help us all. They don't understand this. <laughs> you are, he is going to have to cook for a while and let that shit marinate and build an audience. And you have to do a lot of things right, which is why I'm worried about Creature Commandos being the first damn thing coming out in 2024. I'm like, who the shit cares about this animated thing? I know, but it'll be a sidebar and it'll it'll just like insist that he started a little bit. Yeah. But... I think but even I, with the I, shareholders, I, it's it's not so much that they like they don't care, uh, not content wise. They care about the, uh, the like the numbers. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I think the most important part will really be: do we give this guy time? And uh, yeah, that's what you're getting at. But that is exactly what I'm getting at. Yes, <laughs> I think though, I don't know. I'm fifty fifty on this. I think if you tried to buy it in the next couple of years and just scuttle the whole thing. Hmm. You might also have to take into account, like, well, they've already started this new narrative and this guy's in charge of it. So we do, do we let it ride or not? I mean, I, I, like, I know you're going to have to buy him out of his contract and all that kind of crap. But like, ah, this happens with, you know, any kind of professional sport more often than you'd like to think. Like, yeah, you just buy people out when they're not working out and you, you put somebody else in. I mean, I, I see him waiting the 3.5 years, but I don't think they're going to. Like I just I hope um, they don't, they I don't hope. have to wait three point five. Like if somebody bought this thing in six months, they could just buy them out. I'm sure there's something in that contract that says that. But it it wouldn't. I think matter. it'd take over a year at this point for anyone to buy them out, though. Here's my point. It, I think if you tried to buy them out, yeah, even a merge. It. I think if you tried to actually buy them out, you would have you would have to wait so long for this to actually work mm-hmm. to let the hype completely die. Uh, let. Twitter, Reddit, all the possible communities just calm the fuck down long enough for you to restart that it wouldn't be worth it. Like, I think you would make more money investing in the new plan. Mm -hmm. Even if it failed, you could just say, well, we tried and we gave them the four years. Yeah. And, you know, there's two movies and a couple shows. Here's Peacemaker 2 just just, uh, as a parting gift. And uh, we're going to try something new now. (laughs) Yeah, I think it would make more sense for them to just like give it a shot, even if somebody bought it tomorrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just worried, but it's nothing we've got answers to right now. Nope. Um, Superman Legacy, uh, according to the Hollywood Reporter's Heat Vision newsletter, roles such as Lex Luthor and members of the supergroup The Authority, which are going to get their own movie, will be cast after Clark and Lois are set up. As far as we know, they're still, they're still, they haven't cast them yet. Uh, and on the latest episode of the hot mic with John Roca, 
Jeff Snyder says or hinted that uh, Mr. Terrific could appear in Superman Legacy. I'm down. Uh, that sounds great. De- right? Deadline's uh, Justin Kroll is saying um, that Gunn was talking to one of the Guardians actors about the role of Lex Luthor, but said it's unlikely to work out. It's not indicated which Guardian star, but uh, they did note that uh, one role that's been tested is labeled Apex, and they suggest that it could be Apex Lex Luthor, a character in the comics that is basically the ultimate version of Lex with powers that let him fight Superman. I think that's from Metal, like the Snyder version. Scott Snyder? Yeah. Let's see. Can I confirm that? Do, 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 do. If I'm correct, he was an absolute badass who basically made an entire generation of things after him. It says Apex Lex is main character in the 2020 video game No Justice Rise of Darkness. He is a god like being with half Martian, half human physiology. All right. I'll pull up my own internet. <laughs> I'm sure there's. Different versions, you know? No, no. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. There was a version in Death Metal. Yeah, Dark Knight's Death Metal had, had a version of him as well. So that version was like the the one that, uh, I forget her name. I forget her name off the top of my head. Like the one who was supposed to be the, uh, uh, she's like the progenitor of the universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perpetua or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Perpetua. Yeah, there you go. Uh, he was basically the one who proved that he was able to... <clears throat> actually execute her ideas and i mean he failed mostly yeah of course mostly but i haven't i haven't seen dark crisis <laughs> I'm, I'm behind on that i'm yeah i'm bearing that that's going to be a vacation read yeah all right let's uh let's sally forth here uh the flashes andy and barbara muschietti signed just signed a first deal first look deal with warner brothers and andy muschietti director of the flash is confirmed to direct the uh, Batman reboot the brave and the bold, which will be in the DC universe proper. Um, I mean, Sasha Kaya. Good. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. He's a fine director. And honestly, uh, Sasha, anyone, anyone who can like hmm? sift through that many freaking changes. I'm impressed. Yeah, he, he made a surprisingly coherent film for that many changes, yeah. honestly. And I would be very, very interested to see, uh, him cook, as they say, uh, under someone like Gunn, who gives more carte blotch to creators. I would. I would. I'm sure we can both agree on this exact thing, though. Like, that film, for what it went through, should have been an entire piece of shit. Yeah. I'll agree with that. And somehow was not. Like, like it or not, it was not an entire piece of shit. <laughs> I think some people will disagree with that, but, you know, subjectivity. It, like, it should have been The Room. Yeah. Uh, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, uh, maybe. Uh, Sasha Kaye says that they are talking. She told USA Today she is talking with DC Studios uh, uh, co-president Peter Safran about returning. And cool. uh, sh- she's a big fan of Superman Woman of Tomorrow by Tom King. We're no- we know that Gunn is um, uh, looking to make that one of their movies. They're looking to adapt that. And we know Tom King is part of the brain trust, part of, part of his, uh, selected few. I am really excited about that. I loved her in the movie and I really wanted her to, uh, continue and was really bummed out when it started flopping. Cause I was like, ah, it means no more Sasha Kaye. Yeah, I know. I agree. Also Tom King had her back. Ah, fuck yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, you want to hit quick break? Yep. Uh, and when we return, we're going to be talking updates on James Mangold's swamp thing. And uh, one of DC's gun plans to leverage what Marvel doesn't have. Superman Lois, Harley Quinn, lots more. Uh, I mean, James Gunn wants to see a dude eat a freaking shoe. (laughs) You got to know about that, right? (laughs) I haven't seen that part. (laughs) Be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, James Mangold, he is saying... While I'm sure DC views Swamp Thing as a franchise, I would be viewing it as a very simple, clean, gothic horror movie about this man-slash-monster just doing my own thing with this, just a standalone. 
He said he's been toying for years with the idea of making a kind of Frankenstein movie. I'm down with that. You know, if you don't know who James Mangold is, this is the dude that did Logan, for God's sake. I did forget that. to Yuma. But yeah, no, that's fantastic. Identity. Like, he's a he's a good filmmaker. Do I remember this correctly, though, as far as the narrative goes? Like, he just, like, stepped in and decided, like, no, I'm just going to do this this one superhero thing. Or do you have something else in his uh, IMDb? What do you mean? Like, he has the Wolverine, Logan. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's done some stuff. Oh, okay. All right. No, I thought he just kind of like, I, sorry, I thought the, the Logan director just like stepped in and was like, no, I'm just going to make this super legit and made a fantastic film. Oh, no, no. He had previously done The Wolverine. Which, honest honest to God, I think was better than people give it credit. It was great up until the Silver Samurai thing at the end. That was weird. And I wasn't a big fan of the, I can't even remember who the, the lady villain was in that movie. Yeah, anyway. You know, the biggest problem with it for me was, I know this sounds stupid, but like it got leaked. I saw a, a cut mm-hmm. of that before any of the CGI was finished. Yeah, a lot of people did. That was not a good thing. It happened to um, the first Wolverine movie, too, the um, X-Men Origins. Yep. Anyway, uh, here's some miscellaneous DCU news. Uh, Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy's Palm Clementif says that she and James Gunn keep talking about doing something with DC. Um, on the Inside of You podcast that I told you all to listen to, and I'll put up a link to that in the show notes, too, because it really is amazing. Um Gunn says, if you look at the MCU, there are very few traditional superheroes. There was never a guy with a secret identity until Spider-Man in the MCU. Their cap was turned into a soldier, even though he wears a mask. Iron Man outed himself at the end of the first Iron Man because they don't want to deal with the whole secret identity thing. But there is a bit more of a fantasy element to DCU because they're these larger than life superheroes. And for me, they're Superman and Clark Kent. They're two different characters and you have to find a way to deal with them as as grounded, uh, sorry, that's as grounded as possible within this world of DC. One of the things that I love about DC that excites me about DC is that in a way is another alternate history. It is Gotham city and Metropolis and star city and Bloodhaven and all these different places in this other reality. And it makes it a little bit like Westeros in some ways. I love it in that way. I love that we get to create true world building in DC. It isn't just we're throwing some superheroes on earth. I think right now that's one of the key differences. And uh, Rosenbaum asked him if he thought there were too many superhero movies. And he says, yes, before he even finished asking. (laughs) And Gunn says, yeah, I do think there's too many, but I think it's much less a problem of too many. Yes, we are not going to overextend ourselves at DC. We're going to be very careful with what we put out and make sure everything is as good as it possibly can be. But I think that's what's happened is that people have gotten really lazy with their superhero stories. They've gotten to the place where, oh, it's a superhero. Let's make a movie about it. And, oh, let's make a sequel because the first one did pretty well. And they aren't thinking about why is this story special? What makes this story stand apart from other stories? What is the story at the heart of it all? Why is this character important? What makes the story different that it fulfills a need for people to see it in theaters, to go see or or on television? I think people have gotten a little lazy and there's a lot of Biff, pal, bam stuff happening in movies. And I'm watching third acts of superhero films where I don't think there's a rhyme or a reason to what's happening. I don't care about the characters and they've gotten too generic. There's this sort of middle of the road type of genre tone that so many superhero movies have as opposed to having very different genres. I like very serious superhero movies. I like very comedic superhero movies. I like ones that are really just a murder mystery, but with superheroes. I like to see these different types of stories as opposed to seeing the same story told over and over again. 100% agree. Yeah. There's got to be a reason to go, man. Yeah. I mean, I think the Batman proves that. Origin story and save the universe over and over again. Right. Yeah. The Batman proves that the stakes were relatively low. It was just, man, is Batman going to be able to help this fictional city? (laughs) 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 Um, That shit made like a billion dollars or almost. Um, So anyway, yeah, the um, the shoe thing. I'll get to the shoe thing uh, at Apps Connor, who has now labeled himself Connor the Shoe Eater. 
Nice. S- said on Twitter, I am being 100% serious. If this happens in James Gunn's DCU, I will put a Herzog and eat a fucking shoe. I will pull a Herzog. And he posted a, a picture from the um, how it should have ended with Superman and Batman sitting at a diner at the table. James Gunn responded and says, please tell me the specifics of what needs to be there to see you eat a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Connor responded, if Superman and Batman sit across from each other in a diner and chat, I will eat one shoe. If they talk about how they would have solved each other's problems with ease, I will eat another shoe. If Batman interrupts Superman by saying, because I'm Batman, I will add another shoe. I'll do a third shoe. <laughs> James Gunn responded, okay, good to know. Back to you in a few, parentheses, years. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'll be looking for it, man. I've always loved the trope that they could probably deal with the other people's villains better. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's genuinely been a lot of fun. Like back, you know, in the BTAS days, that was fun. Yeah, I do enjoy those. I mean, you think you think Bruce Wayne couldn't deal with Lex Luthor? Come on, come on. Well, you know, in the, one one of the things I like in the comics is. Like they all kind of deal with Lex. Like Batman will just show up in one of his offices and be like, yeah, we're, we're not getting along here. You're messing with Gotham now. Or, you know, I love those where you just worldwide scale. Like, Oh, Hey, listen, bitch. Uh, you're infringing. Uh, fuck that. <laughs> Back the absolute hell off. Especially and then when Lex Luther was like, president. Oh, get out of my office, playboy. And he's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just kind of doesn't say I'm watching you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we talked about this, but um, James Gunn did this thing where he listed his top five comic book movies. And from five to one, in this in this order, Deadpool, Old Boy, A History of Violence, Superman the Movie, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, and I believe we're talking about actually doing, talking about these movies on Patreon, right? I think we did talk about this and also that. Yeah. You want to do that? Yep. Cool. Um, so a lot of people are reading into this thing. Uh, Warner Brothers is releasing this huge DCEU box set, and it's like $165. The set includes Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, not the extended edition, Wonder Woman, Justice League, Shazam, Aquaman, Wonder Woman 1984, Black Adam, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and The Flash. A lot of people are upset. There's no Suicide Squad movies. Um, no, No Birds of Prey. And uh, no Zack Snyder's Justice League. So uh, be beware of that. Make sure your family members know, don't get me that shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Christmas coming up. Don't give me that shit. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's hit up a little TV. Uh, we could have guessed DC's Penguin series is officially the latest project to suspend production amid the ongoing Writers Guild of America strike. Of course. Uh, On Tuesday, reports revealed that WGA East picketers protested outside of the series set in Westchester, New York, shutting down production for the remainder of Tuesday. Mm -hmm. One of the things I liked about this is uh, someone commented on this and said, (laughs) Batman's been trying to shut the Penguin down since 1940. The WGA did it in a day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's glorious. Yeah, that's glorious. Um, we got the, uh, our little Superman and Lois show renewed for a season four, but it came at a cost y'all. Uh, it has been cut down to 10 episodes and reports have come in that seven, seven cast members Hmm. will not be returning as series regulars. We're going to lose Dylan Walsh who plays Sam Lane, Emmanuel, uh, Chiriki who plays Lana Lang, Eric Valdez who plays Kyle Cushing. Andy Navarrete, who plays Sarah Cushing, uh, Wool Parks as John Henry Irons. We're, we're we're losing everybody, but the but the main people. We're losing everybody, but Clark, Lois, and the boys. <laughs> that I mean, total one hundred percent. That's what's happening. Yeah, it does say that each of the cast members could appear in the ten episode fourth season in recurring or guest starring roles, depending on their availability. Yeah. And it makes sense if you're, I know you're not caught up, but I am. And I'm like, look, man, Lex Luthor just got out of prison. They're probably going to have to go into witness protection or something. 
this asshole just like walked up to the Kent farm and, and threatened Lois's life on her front porch. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, by the way, Michael Cudlitz, Lex Luthor has been promoted to a series regular for season four. So I'm good. And he's doing a fantastic job, by the way. Like this is a version of Lex I have never seen before. And uh, I've seen like one clip, but yeah, I like it. Yeah. He is like, borderline redneck grizzled son of a bitch. Like he is, he is, he's a bad boy. And if that's what they're doing, if they're, you know, really just kind of cutting down, cause most of these people's they're, they're kind of starting to stagnate. So I could see them kind of just being like, oh, look, we can wrap them up in a couple of scenes. Also, we need the money. <laughs> yeah. And we knew it was down between, you know, it was going to be Superman and Lois or Gotham Knights. that got renewed. Superman and Lois is the strong performer. It's also the one that's really super expensive. So Gotham Knights is officially canceled after one season on the CW. And the showrunners did say, they did confirm, they tried shopping it to another network and it's not happening. No one wants it. It's done. Mm, brutal. Sorry for everyone who liked that show. I man. really am I, too. Uh, I am. That's always brutal. It Never happens. saw it. Never looked good to me, uh, and I was I kind of feeling like this was going to be what's happening. Like, if it had gone on a couple seasons and had started getting really good word of mouth and stuff, like, maybe I would have, I probably would have gone back for it. I probably will go back for it eventually and just check it out and see what they were doing. Yeah, eventually I will, too. But yeah. I also feel like I'm a veteran of writer strikes at this point. And I don't even think it was that. It was... No, I'm just, I'm just used to losing. That's all. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, this was because I'm, this... I'm a friend of failure. <laughs> this is because Next Star bought the CW, and they've just been canceling every damn thing. Yeah. That has a script attached to it, WGA oh, yeah. or not. Yeah, no. no, no there, there will be nothing on that channel at some point that has anything that I would actually like. Yeah. You do watch some reality shows. I do. So yeah. maybe possibly in syndication. But like me, nah, nah. It's over for me and CW probably. Yeah. Which, oh no. I mean, it has been in a while. <laughs> uh, Harley Quinn, man. We got a season four premiere date confirmed by Max. Absolutely. July 27th. It's coming back. I love Harley Quinn. The animated series is raunchy. It's violent. It's amazing. There's a lot of heart to it. Uh, I'm honestly I can't considering wait. this like a birthday present. Yeah, man. Like I'm, I'm man. Me and my wife are both really excited about yeah. that. It's, um, it's glorious. It's a, it's fantastic. Here, here's a thing that I'm getting a little afraid of. <laughs> Batman caped crusader. Cause we know Amazon picked it up for a couple seasons. Mm-hmm. And during a recent appearance at the, uh, Annecy animation festival, uh, <laughs> uh, Peter Gira Giraldi, maybe I don't know. Giraldi hinted that Cape crusader will be more of the, com- the complete vision Tim had for Batman, the animated series, but could not get away with. He says, it's everything that Bruce Tim wanted to do in the original series, but because it ran on a kid's channel, he wasn't able to do it. So this definitely skews older. It's more of his complete vision, man. There's going to be like titties and weird. Oh, they're all going to fuck sex shit. Everybody's going to get be boned. You know, Oh my God. Like Bruce Tim is a pervert. Yeah. (laughs) And I, you know what? I'm here for it. Let's see it. What I'll do you really want to do, Bruce? That's like, I'll see what it's got. But yeah. What do you want to no, really that's, do? That's, yeah. Uh, like, I know it's going to be like Batman ripping a hole in Catwoman's crotch and just like plunging his bat dick into her. 100%. Like, 100%. <sighs> like, Tim's got a thing, man. Yeah. Did you see the new trailer for By Adventures with Superman? No. It actually looks really good. Let me let me send this to you. I I'm I'm curious what you think. I meant to send it to you earlier and I forgot. I'm sorry. I just sent it to you. I think it looks so fun. <laughs> uh, the new show will launch on Thursday, July 6th at midnight on Adult Swim, and then it'll hit max the very next day. Season oh, one will no. debut with two back to back episodes, and then new episodes will hit every Thursday. But with if you Quaid. miss those. No, no, I have seen this. Yeah, it, yeah. It does okay. Look you can catch Encore episodes on Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Adult Swim and on Saturdays at midnight on Toonami. Yeah, I thought it looked really fun no, for something that has an anime look to it. I'm not big on anime. Uh, yeah, it's not my favorite visual style, but 
as far as the story goes, it, it looks fine. Yeah, I think it looks really solid. And uh, Justice League X Ruby Superheroes and Huntsmen Part 1 is going to start streaming on Max beginning on July 24th as announced by Warner Brothers Discovery. And that's it. That's our news. Well, shit. I know. <laughs> and I've got to be somewhere. I mean, so we got to wrap this shit right, up. If you insist. Then shit. I know. I'm sorry. Try to get mm. be, be a little more consistent with, uh, with our news now that The Flash is out and we... Don't have to like mute every damn thing and try to stay away from spoilers. I, I love that you're trying to be consistent now that the flash is out. I know. As though anything, Shut up, Jason. anything in our world is consistent. Shut up, Jason. Fuck you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to do an episode every week. And if you can't do it, I'll just be like, and this is my co-host, Jason Goss. He'll be like, hey. Yeah, just <laughs> completely like, do your voice or my approximation of it. Like, yeah, dum, dum, dum. that's actually not bad. <laughs> All right, guys. I, uh, I would do an impersonation, but my my voice is not capable of having such <laughs> grand and and dulcet tones. Yeah, we were we were talking the other night about just like doing a thing where we just like record you reacting to lots of things, like very short reactions that I could just pipe in. If I needed you, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'll always like, be there for you. Like, hey, Jason, how you doing? Click. Man, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just anyway, we're hey, not Jason, actually. How do, do you feel up with this? <laughs> Did you hit it? <laughs> yeah, I actually do wonder though if we could like train an AI, just like run all of our episodes through an AI oh, and have God. them like just no, create we have so much data. Absolutely. We yeah. Could. This is like 693 or something like that. Yeah. 692. No, it's it's I don't not even a know. matter of data. Yeah. No, that. Yeah. Thousand percent. If you had the access <laughs> to the software where you, you could recreate me. If I could figure out and something, I, would I might hate it even more than I do myself. If I could, fi- if I could find a software for it or, and if any of you guys know something, let me know. But I would love to to just run that and make an AI episode of DC on screen and just put it on our Patreon. That would be so fun. That would be fun. Um, <laughs> but we got to head out. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We are on Instagram and Twitter at DC on screen. You can email us at DC on screen at gmail.com. And uh, we're on Patreon, patreon.com slash DC on screen. And that's where we put up stuff like, uh, you know the uh what do we call it comic castaways <laughs> yeah <laughs> where we randomly find a, a some castaway seldom heard of b d f, f character <laughs> and talk about them and uh we usually have a really good time with it's that definitely not BDE. something I'm sure about um, that <laughs> z level character yeah that you'll probably see in an upcoming james gunn production because he loves those assholes <laughs> yeah and anyway yeah we gone until next time keep some dc on your screen bye hey thanks for listening to dc on screen our theme song is by jason goss and michael shackleford of galactic engineers the incidental music is by michael shackleford and kevin mcleod you can rate the show on spotify or rate and review us on apple podcasts Doing that really helps push our show to new listeners, so your help would be much appreciated. You can also contact the show at DC on Screen on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or email us at dconscreen at gmail.com. To become a patron and get ad-free episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash dconscreen. Your reviews and feedback may end up on a future episode of DC on Screen. DC on Screen is a production of maladjusted.tv in association with Stranded panda if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe on apple podcasts spotify or whatever damn platform you use